Hello everyone, today I'm going to be showing you how to model these drawers here. The drawers are movable by pressing G and X, so I can bring them out and put things inside them if I wish. Let's get started. Okay, so first if we don't have a cube in our scene, we're just going to press Shift and then A at the same time to open up our add menu. Left click cube, then we're going to press G, Z and then 1 to move it up by 1. Now I'm going to press S to scale and then X, so I'm going to make it thinner. And I'm going to do the same on the Y, -ax y axis. So I'll press S and then Y, scale on the Y. Now I'm going to press Tab to go into edit mode. And I'm going to press 3, which will go into face light mode. Then I'm going to left click this front face here. And then I'm going to press I to inset. Now I've done that, I'm going to press 2 to enter edge select mode. I'm going to left click this bottom edge here. Then we'll press G and then Z. And I'm going to bring it up to about here. Okay, now I've done that, I'm going to press 3 again to enter uh, face select mode. And I'm going to left click this face here. Then press E. And by default it should go to here but if it's not working you can just press x now i'm going to go into x-ray mode to check how far in that face has been extruded to so as you can see it's not really that far back so i'm going to press g and then x again and move it to about here i'm going to turn off x-ray mode now and now we've done this i'm going to give you your quick save reminder so just press Control and then s and you can just call it drawers now I'm going to press tab again, make sure I'm in face like mode with free on the keyboard, and I'm going to press alt left click here to select the loop. Then I'll press shift left click to select this one too, and I'm then going to press shift and then D to duplicate these faces. Then I'll right click and I'll come down to separate and I'll choose separate by selection. You can notice how we have two separate objects. This one here is going to be my first drawer. So now I've done that, I'm going to press Control and R and I'm gonna create a loop here. But I don't want to have just one loop, I want to have two. That way it's now split into thirds. Awesome, so now I've done that, I'm going to press free. Then I'm gonna press Alt left click here to select these loop, this loop here. Then I'll press Shift Alt left click to select another loop. Then Shift left click to select this bottom face. And then I'm gonna press X and then delete faces. Now I've done that, I'm going to press 1 on the keyboard to go into vertice select mode, and I'm going to left click that vertice, and then shift left click this one, and then press F to join them together. Now I'll press Alt left click to select this loop, and I'll press F again and fill that in. Now as you guys can probably see, when I'm going into edit mode and editing things, you can see that it's having quite a bit of uh, a weird reaction with the outside of the drawer, and there usually is a tiny gap around um, a drawer in a real drawer. So I'm going to go ahead and scale this a little bit, just a very tiny bit. So I'll press S and then, and then Y, and just a very tiny bit there. So as you can see, it's um, been scaled down by like 0.1. Might want to change that to about 0.99. Now I'm going to go into tab into edit mode, press 3, and I'm just going to pull this face down a very, very tiny bit. So press G and then Z if it's selected. And we'll try and make it about the same there. There we go. Then I'm going to left click this back face, um, turn on my x-ray mode here, and I'm going to press G and then X to pull that out a tiny bit. There. I'm going to turn my x-ray mode off, and now I'm going to go ahead and fill in this front face. So I'll press tab into edit mode, 2 to enter edge select mode, then I'm going to press alt left click on this edge here, and that should select the loop. Doesn't work, try press it again. Then I'll press F on the keyboard, and now it's filled in. Now what I'm going to do is, quick save reminder, press Control and S to save. Now what I'm going to do is name my objects. So I'll press tab to come out of edit mode. And now I'm in object mode, I'm going to double left click this here. I'm going to call this drawer 1. And this one, I'm going to call drawer container. Right, brilliant. Now I'm going to press this eye icon on the drawer container to temporarily remove it from my scene. Keep in mind, if you render this image, you'll still be able to see it. So keep that in mind. Now I'm going to left click my drawer, press tab to enter edit mode. And now I'm going to press Control and then R to create a loop. I'm going to move this loop up to here. This is going to be the kind of front of my drawer. Now I'm going to need to create a square. And you guys will see in a minute why I've not just inserted this. So I'm going to create another loop here. And I'm going to try and get it so it's roughly the same size. There we go. Then again, the other way. There we are. And finally, we'll do another one along this side. Awesome. Now we've done that, I'm going to press 3 to enter face like mode. Left click this face and then press E and then Z to bring it down on the E axis. Then I'll left click this uh, yellow circle to go to the side view. And I'll press the x-ray button. If this face is still selected, I'm going to press G and Z to pull it down. So around there will do nicely. Press the x-ray mode again to come out of it. So I'm going to press Control R and create a loop in the middle here. Right click to keep it in its default position. And I'm going to press 2. Great. So 
now I've done that, I'm going to bring these edges down a little bit, these edge loops down. So still in edge, edge mode, which is two in the keyboard, I'm going to press Alt, left click on this edge, and then I'm going to press GG, so that's G twice, and I'll move this down by, let's say, 0.3. Then I'm going to press Alt, left click on this one, and then I'm going to press GG, and then 0.3. Now you can see that this is more or less in the middle, which is what I was wanting. So first of all, before we go into the handle, I'm going to work on the side here. So I'll press free on the keyboard to enter face like mode I'll left click this face and then shift left click this one and then i'm going to press e and then you can extrude on that axis there now as you can see i want to join up that edge to this one here so to do that i'm going to press one on the keyboard make sure i've still got that face selected and i'm going to come down to tool and here we have auto merge which what this does is merges the vertices together so now all we need to do is press g and y and that'll move it on that axis again i'm going to try and line them up and see that these uh, vertices are now connected perfect now i've done that i'm just going to press three again to enter face like mode left click this face and then press x and then faces and now you can see we've got a nice cut now we're just going to do the other side so i'll press free on the keyboard left click this face left click this shift left click this face then i'm going to press e and by default it will go there and then i'm going to press one on the keyboard just so i can see the vertices here and i'm just going to press g and y and try and move them and connect them up might take a bit of trial and error there we go and now you can see they're connected now i'll press free on the keyboard left click this face and press X faces and now we've got a nice symmetrical cut. Finally for this drawer we're going to press Control R left click in the middle here and we're going to change the number of cuts to two and that'll give us a nice shape here. Then what I'm going to do is press free on the keyboard left click this face and I'm going to press E and it'll go back by default so you can press C twice or you can press X and we'll left click around here. Then I'm going to go into x-ray mode just so I can see how close to the edge it is so I can bring that back a little bit more so I'll press G and X and I'll bring Bring it to quite close to the edge because we need quite a bit of space there. Brilliant. Now I'm going to turn off X-ray mode and I'm going to create an edge loop here. So I'll make an edge loop in here, bring this out to the front. So it's about here. I'm going to check it in X-ray mode just so I can see. Good. Now I'm going to come back um, and now I'm going to create another two edge loops. So I'll press GG to move it to around. You should do nicely. I'm going to round that off to 9.5 and I'm going to create another one here and try and make it around the same. I'll make this 9.5. There. Now I'm going to press free on the keyboard, left click this face and then E and then Z to move it up on the Z axis. And now I'm going to press the X-ray mode so I can see a bit better. And I'm going to press 2 on the keyboard to enter edge light mode. Left click this edge, G and then Z to bring it up. Got a kind of grip which you can take with your hand there to pull the drawer out. You can even go control and R here to create a loop in the middle and we can press 2 and we can select this edge in the middle here and press G and Z to move it up like that. All right, great job. So that's us finished our drawer. So I'm going to create a really quick material here. So plus new, I'll uh, keep all this as default. I'll turn my roughness down. Now I'm going to want to make the inside of the drawer a different color. Um, this is just personal preference. You don't have to do this. So I'm going to create another material. Then I'm going to make the color a little bit more gray right around here. Then I'll press tab. First, I'm going to left in the, this space here to make sure I'm not selecting anything. Then I'll press alt left click, select this edge loop then shift alt left click it's like this one and now i'm just going to press shift and then drag this to select all these make sure you're not in x-ray mode because you might select faces you don't want to select shift left click this face here then i'm going to press shift and then drag it's like those as well then shift and drag now i'll press this other bit of the drawer material and I'll press assign and now we've got uh, a separated color here. If you want to make this bit white again you can, you can just shift left click these and you can left click this material and press assign but that's up to you, you don't have to do that. Now just to clean up the topology a bit I'm going to press uh, 1 on the keyboard I'm going to press Control and R, left click and I'm going to bring this down to around the same level as this vertice here. Now I'm going to do the same thing again. I'll press Control R and I'm going to create another one and try and line it up with the top one more or less. Now I'm going to turn on Auto Merge and I'm going to select this vertice here and I'm going to come to this top menu beside the magnet and left click vertex. Then I'll turn the magnet on and I'm going to press G and you'll see it'll lock to that vertice there. And that's going to join them up because I have auto merge on. So I'll do again here. I'm just going to do the same for the rest. So now it's all joined up, our topology will be much nicer. So now you can see when I left click this vertice here, I'll turn off this magnet mode and move this. It's all joined up. Awesome. So that's us finished this drawer. Now, if you really want to, you can create some edge loops here and pull the sides out to create the, the protrusion to go in here. But I personally am not going to do that because I want to keep this tutorial nice and short. But the skills you've learned in this tutorial should be more than enough for you to do that yourself if you are wanting to do that. Now I'm going to turn my drawer back on and we're going to go ahead and first of all, 
all assign a material to this drawer. So I'm going to press plus new and I'm just going to select my front of drawer material again. Then I'm going to left click this drawer here, press control A. I'm going to apply the location. And then what I'm going to do is press shift and then D and this will duplicate it. And then what I could do is press G, Z and then 0.5 and you can see it's gone up. So I'll just press minus and then press G and then Z to pull it down until there's like a tiny gap there. Perfect. Now, if you wanted to save the amount of processing power that this file needs, you could also press Alt and D, and this will duplicate the object, but the object will be linked. So I'll show you what I mean by that. First of all, I'm going to move it down. So I'll press G and then Z, and I'll go for 0.5 minus, and then just press G and Z again to move it to around there. And then I'm going to enter edit mode again. Then I'm going to press the X-ray mode again, turn on both the X-rays. And I'll press tab to go into edit mode. I'm going to left click this bottom face here. So press free on the keyboard to enter face select mode and left click this face. G and Z. I'm going to pull this down. That should do nicely. So back to what I was saying. First of all, I'm going to even this up a bit. So I'll press G and Z. Perfect. The difference between duplicating with shift D and alt D is these two objects will be linked because this was duplicated with alt D. Now what that means is if I go into edit mode in one of these objects and let's say I select one of these vertices, you can see it selected it on the other object, but not this one because this one was duplicated with Shift D. So that's the difference between Alt D and Shift D. Um, this is also the same for materials. If I change the material on this one, you can see it changes it on both of these ones, but not the top one because the top one has been separated from these two by using Shift D. If you have any more questions about that, feel free to ask me in the comment section below. I'll be happy to explain it in further detail. But as you guys can now see, we have now finished our drawer. Now, if we want to move one of our drawers out, we can just left click it and then press G and X. And now you can see we've pulled the drawer out. You can also change the material of this. I might change it to the other bit of the drawer. And now it's this kind of nice uh, white and gray contrast. I might even make the gray a little bit darker and you can even add a bit of color to it if you wish. But I'm gonna keep it colorless by turning the saturation to zero. Might actually make it a little bit darker. That should do nicely. And I'm gonna turn on this other bit of the drawer material, I'm going to turn the roughness down. That will make it a little bit more reflective. And there we have it guys, there's our drawers. I've explained rendering images in quite a few tutorials before, so I'll link one of those tutorials here.